Hey guys, Jocelyn here with Fantasia Elegance. In this video I'll be showing you how to make this wire wrapped Christmas tree, uh, which you can make into a Christmas tree ornament as I have done here. You can also do a smaller version of this and do, you know, earrings or a charm or a pendant. I do have a tutorial already on how to make these sized for earrings. I will leave a link to that if you're curious. But for this one I'll be showing you how to make the ornament size. These are great if you need some last minute uh, Christmas gifts or stocking stuffers. They work up very quickly and are quite easy. So let's jump in and see what tools and materials you'll need. So I like to use for these aluminum wire. It is very nice and lightweight and it doesn't tarnish, uh, both of which are great for Christmas tree ornaments. I am using a 12 gauge aluminum wire here and I will leave a link in the description section below for where I buy mine. I get it on Amazon. Um, you can do any color you like. It comes in lots of different options as you can see here. I've done it in silver, gold, and bronze. Today I'll be working with some gold uh, 12 gauge aluminum wire. Again, check the description section below for where you can buy that. If you want to add a ribbon hanger, which is optional, but if you want to do that, I'm just using some 1 8 inch wide satin ribbon, which again I got on Amazon. comes in lots of different colors. And then to finish off the ribbon ends, you'll want something like fray check or some clear nail polish will work as well to finish off that ribbon end and keep it from fraying. As far as tools goes, I'm going to be using some round nose pliers, some flush cutters, some chain nose pliers, and just a tape measure to measure out our wire, which let's go ahead and do. So we are going to need a fairly long piece of wire here. We're going to cut a 30 inch length. And I always get asked how I get my wire so straight and nice to work with. I do have a little trick for that. So basically I unwind the length of wire I'm going to be needing. And then as you can see, it's got some little bends and cakes and warbles in it. And I just take a cloth. This is the outside of a polishing cloth. Um, the inside removes tarnish, but I'm just going to use the outside of this. You could use any rag, just something to protect your fingers really. And I just grip on the wire and I use my fingers to draw it through the rag, flexing at first one direction. And then I'll draw it through flexing it the other direction. And just repeating that over and over, the combination of kind of alternating which way you're flexing it is going to wind up taking out all those little kinks. And then you can end up by just running it straight. So I'm going to do that for a 30 inch length of wire and go ahead and cut that. So now that we have our long 30 inch piece of wire, we're just going to bend it right in half. And I'll do that by taking both of those ends, meeting them together, holding them with one hand, and then I'm going to kind of run it, run my other hand up to close it up a bit. And we're going to be working with the center part now. We're just going to start crossing these tails over to make a little bit of a teardrop shape right at the top here. And you can use your uh, round nose pliers to make this a bit easier. And we're going to make a little teardrop shape that's about an inch high. So if you're following along, that's going to be just about an inch high there. And then we're going to take both of these tails Kind of bend them off to the sides a little bit so they are going a little bit more horizontally. And then we're going to go out about an inch from the center, gripping with our round nose pliers, and we're just going to create some little perpendicular teardrops below that one that we just made. And we'll do that on each side so we've got something like that. And at this point we can refine those shapes a little bit. We want these side ones to be a little bit smaller and a little bit more flattened out than the top one. So I will go ahead and do that, just making them a little bit, a little bit smaller, a little bit more flattened. So that we get that kind of Christmas tree shape that we're going for. And it is important to try and get these symmetrical. So that's what we have now, and you can pay attention where these wires are crossing to make sure that little square shape in the middle is symmetrical as well. That will help the overall finished look, so just pay attention to that little space there. And now we're just going to kind of repeat that, making successively larger sets of these little side teardrops on both sides. So to do that, I'm going to take this uh, right hand wire first and go kind of just guesstimating where that second teardrop is going to sit below this one, and about that distance down start bending this out to the side. And then we want to, as you can see here, have them get larger with each pass. So I'm going to go out a little bit to the right of where that arm ends with my uh, round nose pliers. And just put in 
another little teardrop wrap right there. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, bending that slightly off so it's going horizontal, moving out a little bit to the left of that upper wrap, and then looping it around. And as you can see how I'm placing these, I'm arranging the wraps so that it will lay flat. So if we view this from the side here, I'm just placing it each time so the wire will lay flat with the previous wrap. So this one uh, I went over top when I wrapped it, this one I'm going behind when I wrap it, and that will just help this to lay flat. It's not a big deal if you don't do that, I just find it makes a nicer flat finished piece. Now I'm going to use my chain nose pliers to refine this shape a little bit. As I said before, paying attention to that little square shape there, we're going to make another one down here. It's a little bit uh, wobbly right now, so I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to straighten these wires out so that as it's crossing over the center part to get to that next branch, it's running a little bit more straight. I just think that's more pleasing uh, to the eye to have that running straight where it all crosses over itself there. So I'm just making a few little adjustments to have that happening. So this point, go ahead and double check that you like the lengths of these side branches. I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit shorter, the second layer a little bit shorter, so that I have room to continue um, making the successive layers wider without winding up with too fat of a Christmas tree. This is really totally up to you and what you think looks good um, and the kind of shape that you're going to like for your Christmas tree. But I'm going to do something about like that. And let me show you the measurement at this point for my second row of branches. I am looking at a two and a quarter inch width there and it's about two inches high, just if you're trying to follow along and make the exact same size as me. So at that point, we're just going to rinse and repeat. So again, I'm going to take these tails, make another set of branches down below. So guesstimating again that distance, I'm gonna bend them out, going more horizontally. And then moving out so that the branch will be a little bit wider than the one above it. I'm going to loop it around. And we will do that on both sides. Okay, and again I'm going to pay attention to this space here and tidy that up a little bit, try and making it match the one up above it. So whatever little adjustments I need to do to make that happen, I will go ahead and do those. I'm going to make this branch a little bit narrower as well. And I am checking periodically that things are laying nice and symmetrically and it's just overall looking good. It's helpful to step back periodically and look at the big picture so that you can make any little adjustments as you go instead of waiting till the end when the little adjustments will throw off the whole rest of the piece. So that's helpful just at each step kind of take a, take a step back and just look at the overall effect that you're getting. So I like to do four levels on this tree. I'm going to add one more set of branches. You can really do as many or as little as you like. I just think four winds up being good for this ornament size. And that is um, how many you can do with that 30 inches of wire length. If you want to do more levels, you'll want to cut more wire, of course. So this is what we have so far. We've got our four layers in, and I have made this kind of conical shape here. Again, you can play around with that a little bit if you want to have it um, be a more exaggerated conical shape. You can make this top row a little bit narrower, etc. But let's go ahead and finish off now by forming this little trunk at the bottom and our decorative little swirls to finish off that wire. So very simply to do that, I'm going to grip where these wires cross and just put two little twists in this wire. Now you do have to be a little bit careful as you're doing this that you don't twist so tightly that you uh, pull this in and make that bottom layer get smaller. 
So just go kind of slowly and grip firmly with your left hand here while you're holding it together. And that will help make sure that you don't deform the shape more than you want to as you're twisting here. So again, I'm just going slowly, making sure I don't put too much torque in to pull in these branches. Okay, so there's our first twist, and then we'll just do another one just like that. And then you can use your chain nose pliers to straighten that trunk that we just formed out a little bit. And I am going to double check here, make sure everything is still looking good and how I want it to. Alright, and then very simply to finish off these ends, we're just going to put some little decorative swirls in, nice and easy. So to do that, I'm going to first cut these tails a little bit shorter. I'm going to go out about an inch there. Let me just measure that for you so you can see what I'm doing. I have to get my ruler back. My baby has stolen it from me. There we go. So I'm going to go out just about an inch here and trim that wire, and we'll do that on both sides. And then taking round nose pliers, I'm just going to grip right on the end and spiral both of these ends in to create those little loops. So that we have something like that. Now if you want to go ahead and add ribbon onto this, you don't have to. You could, of course, hang this right on a small tree branch. You could use a little wire hanger. Um, I think ribbon is a pretty way to finish this off, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. So again, I'm using 1 8 inch satin ribbon for this, and we're going to cut a 9 inch length to make our little hanger. So let me measure that out here, a 9 inch piece. And I've got some fabric shears here to cut the ribbon without it getting mangled or frayed. That's always helpful. And then we're just going to bend this piece of ribbon in half. So I'm going to meet the ends up flat against each other. And we'll put a little knot in at the very top of these ends here. So I'm just going to wrap it around itself, tucking both those ends through that little loop. Just putting a super simple knot in there. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. And I'm leaving about a half inch, a little more, of tails up there. Once you've pulled your knot nice and tight, I'm going to trim off those tails at a uh, 45 degree angle, just to have a nice pretty little pointed ending there. And this is where you want to use your fray check or clear nail polish or something, just to paint those ends, keep them from fraying. So I'm going to use clear nail polish just because that dries a little bit faster for the purposes of this video. I'm just going to dab a tiny bit right on the ends there. And then once we've given that a few minutes to dry, we're just going to take our ornament here, and I have a little trick to loop this through the top. So I'm going to go to the center bottom of our ribbon, kind of lay it flat across the tip top of our ornament, and then I'm going to swoop the tip of it back from behind and come up through the middle there. By doing that, if you pull this tight, it will just make a little pretty loop right at the top there. And then if you put a Christmas tree branch through the ribbon here, the ornament will hang nicely facing the front. So again, very quick and simple tutorial. Um, I can't take design credit for this design. It's been around for quite a while. I see it all over the place, so I'm not even sure how one would go about finding the um, original designer of this who came up with this little motif. Um, for that reason, of course, if you want to make these and sell them, you don't need to give me design credit. Um, feel free, if you think you know who was the original artist for this, you can leave me a comment below. But this is just my take on how to make this, and I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable and easy to follow. Um, one fun idea I had for customizing these further was that if you had some large hold beads that you could slide on the wire as you go, you could kind of position those beads along as you're making the tree, and they would look like Christmas tree ornaments, which would be, which would be a fun thing. You could also add beads on with some little um, eye pins or head pins as little dangles, that would be another option. But as you can see, it's very fun just making the little wire motif in different colors with different ribbon styles. Um, again, very quick and easy, fun stocking stuffers. 
I do hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season and Merry Christmas. I will catch you all in the next video. In the meanwhile, happy crafting!